page, eight and a half by five and a half piece of paper. And we're going to be stamping on uh, this is soft light. It's a moon or sun, depending on what color you stamp it in and how you use it. Okay, let's see. I'm just going to center this one and I'm going to move it down a little ways because we're going to try to give this scene um, a bit of a corona, not coronavirus, but you know that ring that you see around the uh, suns or moons sometimes. And that's what this um, scene is going to be about. All right, so that is stamped out in a dark blue. You can stamp it out in various tones. You can do it in a light blue to, all the way to black if you want to. But I'm keeping it pretty dark because of all the tones that I'm going to bring into it. Um, if you stamp it in a lighter tone, it takes on a definitely a softer feel. But um, I want it fairly bold and dramatic. Okay, now this is the Sedge Filler stamp, and what we're going to do is I'm going to create this little bit of a, a mound or hill. This, and this is just being done in black ink. If I was stamping this in a high noon springtime scene, I would stamp that in green or something like that. If you're doing it in summer, California, you'd stamp it in brown, probably. Okay, now I have some other trees that I'm going to be stamping in here, but I'm going to lay down a lot of tones in here before I stamp these ones out. Uh, just simply because I want this to remain nice and uh, crisp um, in our impressions. Yeah, I mean, you could you could stamp it out ahead of time, but I have a lot of different things I want to do on here first. And, um, you know, you, you can do it at any time, and I just assume do it later. Stamp it out later. Okay, let's see. I was going to use that lid there for some of this... Uh, Distress ink, tumble glass, re-inker ink. I'm going to be using a lot of the first color, and it just makes things so much easier for me if I just put a big dollop of ink on my applicator like this, and I can really spread this around very quickly. Okay. All right, now the moon is going to be my light source in the scene. Okay. So, I'm going to try to not color that moon out, all right? So if you want that to be your light source, or if you want anything to be refre reflecting that light, then just simply don't color it. Um, if you're not familiar with doing this type of coloring, coloring for lighting specifically, all it means is that you have to put on the brakes. Instead of just seeing this as one area to be colored uniformly, in mono value, it just simply means you retain some light or you define the light through the use of shade, which means you're leaving your light source as is and your reflected light as is, okay? Doesn't mean you can't put some color in it, but just generally leave the areas light that you want to remain light. It's, just, it's not any more complicated than that. If you want some light in your scene, then don't color certain areas and then because you start off with a white piece of paper. A lot of people find that's very complicated to do. And I can understand it though, because if they're used to filling in entire areas like a like a coloring book, you know, that's been defined by outlines and they're just used to doing the whole thing uniformly, but all it means when it comes to lighting is just don't tone everything in altogether. And you can see it in all of the objects that are around you. It's just various um, levels of um, value on whatever we're doing. This mouse right here, for example, you can see things are lighter in certain areas and darker in darker areas, but this is all one uniformly. And that's white, you know. So, it's like, I don't know, a 
like these jars right here, you know, you can see different, this is all the same color of blue, but, you know, if you have some areas in blue that are in shadow, it's going to be a darker version of that same blue, right? Pads, different values on the top here, where it's top lit, darker on the side, right? But it's the same color of blue. So, when it comes to something like this, all it means is that you just retain some areas of light that you want to remain light. In this case, on the grass, that's supposed to be reflected light from the moon, right? Okay, so, um, I have a lot of area to fill in here, so let's go with a little bit more. I'm going to use a little bit more of this tumbled glass. This tumbled glass um, that I've used so far has really um, dried to the surface you know, very quickly because it's absorbing into the page too. So not only am I coloring with this first color, but I'm also kind of saturating the surface somewhat. And that's also something that I do that's different than a lot of traditional forms of coloring where you're just coloring uniformly. As soon as you get something covered, you know, on the surface, you know, that's it. You move to a different color or you move to a different area and fill in. But what I'm doing is I'm kind of saturating the page a little bit, and that's where people, you know, that haven't done this style of ink layering before kind of have to get used to that, too. You have to use a little bit more ink because you're not only kind of coloring on the surface like that, but you're also kind of saturating the pulp of the paper a little bit with more ink, okay? And you only have to do that with the, really the first, you know, color or two, all right? It, you know, it requires a lot of saturation from those first couple colors. Okay, that was tumbled glass. Any kind of light blue. If you have a memento summer sky or something like that, you can use that. If you have the reinker for this, you know, this Marvy, that would be fine. And you're only going to have to get that amount of coverage with your first color too. You know, that that degree of saturation into the uh, surface of the paper. Let me switch these back out here. Put this black one in with my black right there. All right, this is a Caribbean blue. It's a little bit more of a warmer blue. Okay. You can leave kind of some streaks in your sky, you know, or leave the whole thing. This application can be very streaky, and it looks pretty good, you know, in terms of, um, you know, the natural kind of... Uh, different types of uh, tone, tonal patterns that you'll see out in nature. Okay, now see this is Caribbean blue and um, just adding it on. This goes pretty fast, especially if you have that first layer of color really saturating your scene, your surface. Makes the other ones blend in really easy and plus having that nice built-up tone and saturation of ink, it makes your colors much richer and more deep and vibrant in the end result. All right, now, let's see, let's go with it. This is a light blue, testing it. It looks a lot darker though, right? You know, than the previous one. So I'm just kind of moving up incrementally up to this color and I'll go even darker than that too. Okay, that was the dark blue. I mean medium, uh, light blue, sorry. <laughs> it's a darker blue than the lightest ones. It's just called light blue, but it's really more of a medium blue in terms of the, uh, you know, the value spectrum. Okay, it goes pretty fast, right? Just, it's just that first color that you know, takes a little bit of time. This is kind of more of a navy blue right here.
It doesn't read as direct navy because I have a lot of the other colors in my applicator here. fairly arid out today. Kind of a hot day here in Southern California. It's supposed to even get up to close to 90 degrees tomorrow. So I can, f I can feel these inks kind of drying on me because this is kind of catching a little bit more. If at any given time, it just feels like a clumsy process. You can always just go back in with your lighter tone and get a good slathering down again and just go back to whatever ink you were already on. Don't fight it, you know, just kind of go back and add more. What, you know, that first color ends up being kind of like a lubricant. So you just go and add more lubricant right over the top of that. So I'm kind of working a little bit faster. Um, you know, I'm not hurrying this or anything like that, but I am trying to get this down now that I know that this is, ink is drying so fast. I mean, this is, you know, pretty dry to the touch. I have it right there on my finger because I'm holding it like that, but it is, you know, dry to the touch here, almost instantaneous. It's not, it's not, it's a little bit damp on the surface, you know, so it's not just completely dry, but it is fairly dry. Okay, see how that um, moon starts to stand out a little bit darker, I mean a little bit lighter, with each darker color that I apply here, okay? This is um, a really dark blue in um, Prussian blue, it's the number 29 Marvy. One of my favorite colors. And this is the color that I stamped out my uh, original uh, moon uh, impression in. So, you know, um, this will be the color that this color and any darker color will be, will be the ones that kind of blend the image and with the surrounding area because it's the same color. See, I'm kind of getting things fairly streaky looking. You can do that, some of that masking uh, type of look too, if you know what I'm talking about. Paper towel masking for kind of extra cloud structures or textures. Torn paper towel ma uh, masking. And it would go right along you know, with the spirit of this. Um, these clouds and moon. Maybe we'll do some of that.
I'm kind of adding some shadows right at the uh, top of this little hill to kind of separate it from the, uh, the sky. Let's try some black. In fact, let's make things easier. Let's go with a little bit of a black reinker. Now I need to be careful here because it's just so dark. And then I have a lot of that on here now. Uh, maybe almost too much. It's kind of sopping wet. I'll go with a real light touch though, or try to. spread it around. See how I'm staying in one area for a really long time? Just to get that nice, even kind of application of color on there. I also have this applicator kind of on the side. You can just do these uh, types of applications with a paper towel too. You watch a lot of other recent videos where I just use a paper towel to, you know, to apply my inks. And those work fantastic. See how often, you know, so how long I'll just kind of stay here. I'm using a very light touch too. I'm starting to get a little bit of a tear on my tip there. I think it's just because of how dry this is. All right, so I'm switching this around. These tips here though, my tips. I mean, I have some newer ones, but a lot of these are 15 years old, 16, I don't know. Some of them, they were, we were using them in uh, d uh, demonstrations and make and takes at conventions uh, over 10 years ago. All right, definitely an oscillation, a very definitive oscillation of light and dark. You light, dark, light, dark, light, dark, light, right? That's what I always talk about in uh, uh, these videos is just kind of that oscillation of uh, light and dark, you know, to kind of create um, or try to create a, a rich looking surface um, area. Uh, at least in terms of value. You can change things around, you can oscillate things in terms of temperature, and brightness, you know, intensity, um, but value is one of the, uh, the first ones that I think of. I think of lighting, okay? It's easy to do that. Watch my videos on uh, Stampscaping uh, U, you know, Stampscapes University, and we go into lighting and just do it monochromatically so that it's very easy and uh, to tell your lighting scheme when you're just working in grayscale. It's a really effective way to learn lighting or just to kind of fine-tune too if you already know it. it. It was good for me to do those exercises as well. Okay, so...
trying to figure this out. Okay, now I cut out these um, these little templates right here for my kind of Corona, and I have to kind of figure out kind of the center point of all these right here. Let's see if I can hold this up to the light and see. This one would be about right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this kind of a um, pigment ink corona around this moon here. Now, the thing about this one is, is I've, here's my thing. If I add this in right now and I stamp my trees over it, that pigment ink is going to show right through my trees. All right, so that being said, <laughs> I think I better stamp the trees first. I, I didn't want to have to kind of add this around and stop right at the tree because sometimes it's a little bit awkward. But yeah, let's go ahead and stamp the trees first just so I know where they are. Let me see. That's where the uh, pigment ink would be. Okay. So I'll just I'll give this a little bit of breathing so I'll move it kind of away from the... Uh, the moon, you know, a decent amount. All right, these, this is the mossy uh, tree trunks image. And I, I'm going to stamp them up on top of this ridge up here. And I'll go about like so. I'm tempted to do it in the Versifying as well because it's just so dark and crisp of an image, but um, the Versifying is just going to take forever to dry and I wouldn't be able to add these other effects right over the top of the Versifying, so I don't want to wait either. I'm not going to sit here and wait for this to dry or heat set it or something like that. Holding this down a little bit longer now, too, because we have a pretty saturated surface, although it should be pretty dry now. It's really hot in here. Hot and dry weather. Okay. See those trees right there? And then I'll add some more on this side, I think. Or, let's see. Here's my large mossy trunks. Let's go with the large one. We'll put this one farther down on the uh, surface or within the composition on the horizon. Lower down usually means closer to us, representationally, spatially, etc. Okay. So, this is a pretty big stamp here. So I have it hanging off, the, going off the top of the scene and going off below the scene as well. Okay. That there. I think I'll go for another one of these right over here on the side. I only ate one of the one of the trunks. I inked up kind of two of them just in case, but uh, we'll put one of them right here, kind of going down all the way as well. It'll kind of frame and balance the uh, composition out a little bit. I could have waited for this one to uh, kind of transfer a little bit more. Some of it kind of, the ink kind of came up like a, like a vacuum, you know, going wet into wet there. That looks okay. Okay, so a little bit of atmosphere to the piece. Okay, now I'll fill in some additional tone on that so it doesn't just look like 
you know, these trunks are transparent, we'll fill them in with additional tone. But that kind of provides our, you know, kind of our lead-in for um, what's going on in the sky. We're using um, these imageries, these land images, but it's really more about that moon and what's kind of happening in the sky, and just in terms of our focal point and uh, kind of main subject matter. All right, now this, these impressions are a little bit wet, but I think it'll be okay for me to, uh, you know, just go on and add. What I'm going to do in here, okay, let me, let me find center again. Okay, so I've just kind of held this up against my light here in the studio, and I put that little dot there, and that dot is going right in the middle of that moon impression. Okay, so that's, we're going to give this little kind of a corona around the, uh, the moon here. I'm not sure if I should do it in this um, Q-tip or if I should use a cotton ball. I'll start off with a Q-tip. We'll go a little bit smaller. And here's what I'm doing. I'm just trying to remove a lot of this ink and kind of make the uh, tip kind of a little bit smashed down. All right, this this Q-tip's kind of had it. Let me use try the others. I'm I'm kind of using, I'm tapping, but I'm getting more of that you know the harder cardboard stick. I want more of the cotton on there. I'm going to try to add a little bit more right at the, uh, the mask and then tapering it off a little bit. I think, I think the cotton ball will work better for that, though, so I'll use some of that. We'll see how it goes here. Okay, let's take a peek. All right. So I'd say right there. So we definitely need a lot more refinement of that, though. Okay, so let's let's just go in and use this cotton ball. Let me find a used cotton ball. One that's a little bit more saturated with ink. When you use these and you kind of use them more and more and more, they kind of get better and better. Because the thing gets a little bit more saturated and compressed. Okay, so I just put some over my tree there, but if you ever need to wipe any off, it's easy to do that. Okay, I think I'm getting more of what I'm going after with this cotton ball. You, know, you can use both. It wasn't bad to use the smaller applicator kind of you know to get things going and to build up that but I don't know maybe that wasn't needed okay see that right there okay now that isn't it I that looks kind of weird just as is but what we do is we uh we add more of this around in different areas, you know, that more of that same texture, meaning kind of thin layer of, uh, of uh, pigment ink over things, just so um, it'll give a 
textual continuity um, with other areas. Okay, so I'm adding it right around my light source, which is the moon, of course. Okay, adding it in some of those clouds like that. Okay. Let me go ahead and soften up some of this corona as well. So I'll go and just kind of tap around this perimeter like this. It's looking a little bit more, I don't know, blended in, I guess. Uh, trying to make this moon kind of pop out more in terms of lighting. It's kind of diffusing it more, but it also makes it stand out a little bit more in just in terms of um, the lighting scheme. All right. I'll add some more in here, I think. Let's see. But I think I, wa I want to add in a little more um, imagery. Okay, so let's wait and see. Let's put this. Okay, so this isn't this little fog and things like that. Um, diffusion is around my light source. Now let's put it around the reflected light down here. Now see, this is where it's like a little stage, right? And that's like a little spotlight. So if we took out all this tone down here, we wouldn't have that reflected light which might look okay if you don't want to have anything kind of, um, if you really want to subdue everything else that's happening within the scene and only have it kind of aimed, you know, the viewer's attention aimed at that source. But if you want, you know, the viewer to be able to see other things, then it's important to leave some areas a little bit light. It doesn't have to be this light. It could be darker, but you know, to have something area down there is just a little bit lighter than, you know, the rest of it or the rest of that space around it. Okay, so um, contrast by the use of shadows, lighting, okay? I always say we're not really officially doing lighting in here. We're just, you know, applying co uh, contrast to a certain area. Okay, so that kind of diffusion, same thing that's happening down here. It's hard to see it down here because this is so light down here. Um, I'm talking about the fog. Okay, so let's see. Let's go in and add a little bit more tone to some of these trees. Okay, I'm just going to fill in with alcohol pens. Alcohol pens are going to be the, the fastest way to do this. It'll give them a little bit more opacity and visual weight. Having some color on them. I only need to do it right around in here where you can see this area of light behind here. I'll just go with a couple different values of blue. See there were the, this um, branch right here, this trunk. On the dark side of the trunk, see on the light side, on the area that's closest to the light source, I'll leave it light, but on this side I'll add a little bit of tone like that. That really stands out, but I'll blend it in. Same thing on this side. Okay. Something like that. Looks terrible. But all you do is you just go into with a lighter tone like this. And you just blend that in like so. I 
I use my lighter colors of a given hue as my blending um, pen. You could use a straight blending pen, but I'd, just, I'd rather use a color for that. A color within the same hue, or a value within the same hue. All right. Let's go back to that same Prussian blue here. Now this is the read small. I'm just going to add in some transitional um, foliage in here. So it really stands out too much, but I'll show you what I'm going to do with this. Okay, this larger one right here. And then again, this is just done in uh, Prussian blue. Okay. And what we'll do is we'll go back and add more um, impressions of these reeds with um, black. Okay, so let's see, I need a mask here, I think. Let's do these smaller ones in, uh, in black dye based ink. The foreground ones I'll do in um, Versifying. totally busy right there so maybe I'll mellow that out a little bit with some additional tone when things get a little bit too busy like that it, you don't want your scene to look like a you know like a Brillo pad or something like that so what I'm doing is I'm decreasing the contrast between those um, shapes in the background Yeah, just using black. This is doing some fine tuning as well. Now that you know, I know where my tree trunks are and whatnot, I can add you know the shadows underneath them. I need to know what I'm going to, or I need to figure out what I'm going to put down there. I have this perfect um, deer silhouette, but I've been using that too much in situations like this. So I'm going to figure out what I'm going to put down here. And let me grab that right now, or I'll figure it out and grab it. Okay, I think I figured it out. I'm going to go for a couple of these caribou images. You can put anything down here. But... I go for these. I'll stamp this one just slightly lower than the other one. And hopefully that represents, it'll give, give us a good representation of depth and distance. Something like that. And I think I'll stamp this other one in dark blue. Maybe we'll do a split tone. Let me see if I can do that. 
Put a little bit of black on there. And the dark blue. And we'll stamp this one a little bit higher. Okay, let's add in some foreground imagery into this one. Or let's see. Eh, should we do some little bit of fine tuning here? Um, let's go ahead and use this white paint pen. White gel pen, Uniball Signo, something like that. This one's very translucent. I mean, the more I shake this up, too, the more opaque it gets. It never gets true opaque. Um, because the colors underneath, colors underneath will always show through, but, um, yeah, see, that's much more opaque, because I, I mixed up the, uh, you know, the, the pigment and binder, um, a little bit, so it stands out a little bit more. Okay, now, um, right around this moon, let's give this moon a little bit of a stronger uh, influence, okay? So I'm putting these little, like, areas of light on some of these cloud uh, parts. The areas that I've left retained um, some light up here. It's just a streak of um, light where I didn't, you know, tone that area in, so it looks like a cloud, so I'm just adding this extra little highlighting to it. Um, if you want to bring a little bit of highlighting on your trees, you can do that. I'm not going to go too much because it, um, you know, this scene is fairly dark, so these little dots really stand out. But see that little highlighting on that side of that tree facing the light and on the opposite side of this tree I put a few little dots sometimes like one or two dots you know and that's you know all, all you really need like see right, right here is that light reflected if I put too much on here it's gonna look like Christmas lights on the tree so you put a little bit more on the area closer to your light source Blending in that little, see that Corona um, halo was kind of going right into this background caribou. So I'm just kind of blending some of that out right there so you don't see this line going right through it. Okay. Same thing with this one. Maybe I'll try to get that out of the mouth right here. Okay, let's go in with that foreground now. Let's really give this some uh, visual depth, some really strong visual depth. So let's go with some VersaFine black. It's, it's a real dark black. And what we'll do is we'll add some more impressions of this right here in the foreground. So this is what this looks like right now with those reeds. The reeds are stamped out in... Um, you know, really dark blue right here. Okay, you see it right here? But we'll try to add even more depth to that space by doing a really dark black.
Okay. So that that looked like deeper space, right? You know, within the foreground itself, you have as dark as that blue looked like before. When you put this really dark black impression right next to it, that blue looks really light. Uh, in contrast, okay. Let's do the same thing up here in the sky. Or similar thing, okay? So I have some hanging leaves, and maybe this is the canopy of leaves up here in the uh, tree. I could stamp this out in blue, but eh, it's fairly dark up here, so I don't think I'm going to do that. Down here it's much lighter, so I can put in those lighter, you know, lighter values and have it show, but up here it wouldn't show up at all. And because it's so dark anyway. Okay. This is the leaves stamp, if I didn't mention that. I lost a little bit of my corona with <laughs> stamping those branches up there, but I think it looks pretty good still. All right, and that is it. I mean, we could go and put a little bit of highlighting on some of those hanging branches or leaves or whatever, but I don't think it really needs it. Okay, so anyways, this wasn't too long of a scene, you know, when you're doing those kind of monochromatic pieces like that, and for the large part stamping kind of more silhouette in nature. Um, things can move pretty fast. Okay, so this is a perfect example of the oscillation of light and dark. They're very definitive, you know, here. Light, dark, light, dark, light, dark. And it's kind of, you know, I'm just breaking up the, uh, the, the fields of uh, light with the use of kind of streaked in colors like that, okay? Um, that little corona thing is just this little extra thing that, you can, you know, little touches like that that you can do to give it a little bit of more of a kind of a graphical interest and uh, pattern. And then, I don't know, this is a subtle thing, okay? So the moon is round, right? So I add in this little extra round shape in here. But if you'll notice, when I added this little hillside here, I did it kind of in this little mound type of thing to reiterate um, the circles that are going on here. So you can see this is like another size of that. So you have a really small round, larger round, and this, you know, if you were to continue it out, you know, it kind of represents kind of a small section of a much greater spherical um, shape. So all those types of things give a little bit of continuity um, and kind of a visual, um, you create these visual relationships and repetition of form within the space. And uh, let's see, you know, just working through um, your values, um, even though we don't see a really a lot of light blue in here anymore, uh, having it underneath that makes that blue much richer as, in, you know, in the end result. Um, simple, you know, stamping out of forms and dark shapes right there and just doing a little bit of a reiteration of lighting. See, like that little dots like that kind of it really reinforces the idea of the lighting direction. Trees to the um, left of the moon are right side illuminated. Trees to the right of the moon are left side illuminated. More highlights in the lighter areas closer to the light source. See, so if I did that many dots out here um, on these trees, it might look a little bit forced and kind of out of place because you're saying these objects are co in complete shadow, but, you know, there's lights hitting it there. You know, if you did, I wouldn't put too much. You know, you put a couple dots like that. Or you can kind of play around. You can go with um, 
highlights, but you can go with like a, a blue over on these ones instead. But I don't know. Like I said, I don't think this one really needs it. Okay, so anyways, thanks for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you like this video, hope you give us a thumbs, thumbs up. And if you have any questions, as always, drop me a note in the comments section.